ABC's strawweight championship of the world, scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Boxing to you first, the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner. He is wearing solid black trunks and joining us all the way from Mandue City on the island of Cebu in the Philippines. He weighed in at 105 pounds. His record includes 29 wins, only one defeat, one draw, with 26 big wins coming by way of knockout. He is ranked the number one WBC strawweight contender in the world, introducing the hard-hitting Ala Villamore. And his opponent across the ring, we present the defending champion on my left, fighting out of the red corner. Entering the ring wearing white trunks with green and red trim, originally from Cuernavaca, Morelos, Mexico, now fighting out of Mexico City, Distrito Federal, Mexico. He weighed in at already 104 and one half pounds. His record represents the longest undefeated streak among current champions with 40 wins, no losses, 30 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight he is making the 15th defense of his title. Here is the WBC strawweight champion of the world introducing Ricardo Benito Lopez. Once again, here's our referee in charge, Joe Cortez, now to give instructions. Lopez, Gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. Come over here, Villamar. Here's the regla in Camerino. Get una pelea limpia. I want a good, clean fight. I obey my commands at all times. Okay, these trunks are a little high. Están poquito alto los calzones. Okay, bien. Okay, shake hands. Good luck. Lopez out a year because of fractured knuckles in both hands, which happened, as he told us, in the first and fourth rounds of his last fight with Andy Tavanis. He underwent seven months of rehab, also treated at the UCLA Medical Center for ankle problems. Villamore's southpaw style should not affect Lopez. Of his 15 title fights, he's fought seven lefties, and he's seven for seven. And he's trained uh, for this fight with uh, Melcher Cobb Castro as southpaw. Villamore down only once in his career in 93. His only loss, a seventh-round TKO for the IBF title against Ratnapol for Surapin of Thailand. This for the WBC Strawweight Championship. The champion Lopez in the white trunks. The challenger Villamore in the black. You, know, you look at Lopez never lost as an amateur, never lost as a pro. Reigning world champion 15 title defenses. His nose is perfectly straight. Yeah. <laughs> Drives me crazy. Well at the time of that last Lopez fight he just didn't seem to be himself. The crowd was going derisively and now we know why after talking to him yesterday why he wasn't himself because of the knuckle problems in his hands. He broke one in the first round, the other one in the fourth round, and he fought 12 rounds with two fractured bones in either hand. Now that takes guts. And literally, that's literally pain. Beat, literally beat the man with one hand. He fought almost yeah. a one-handed fight at that. Andy Tavanis, the uh, the other man. So so he's had intense physical preparation for this fight, but he hasn't fought in a year, which brings up the questions of ring rust. Will it take some time for the reflexes and the reactions to to kick in? You would think a uh, a normal human being. Yes, but we'll see about uh, this guy. Some think he's immortal in the world of boxing. If he was working with Cobb Castro in the gym, Cobb Castro brings a lot to the table, and his reflexes would have to have been honed then, and I believe they probably will be. And even though Villamore's a left-hander, he told us his best punch is the right hook. And, of course, uh, Lopez has seen so many left-handers, it just doesn't bother him a bit. I mean, not a bit. Villamore, the southpaw precision puncher. That's a good straight to the left. The right hook, as we mentioned, he's a hard hitter. Right now, he's giving uh, Lopez too much respect, too much um, just watching and waiting kind of thing. Lopez is doing his thing, not, not hard. He's just trying to feel him up, but he is doing all of the fighting. Lopez has 30 KOs in his 40 uh, fights, all victories. Told us he's not concerned with what round this ends in. It doesn't really matter. But 15 of his 30 KOs, just for the record, are in three rounds or less. He's gone the distance only 10 times in his 40 fights. And Villamore's only had three fights go the distance. 26 out of 29, didn't make it. We're talking about some bombers here, folks, but 
Right now, they look like they're just throwing wallflowers at each other, little, little pity pats. They're not throwing anything big yet. Lopez, tremendous puncher, but not a one-punch fighter. Relies on the accumulation of punches. He says he doesn't go in looking for the knockout, even though he's got so many. He says KOs are circumstantial. Oh, what the, what the hell he's a like, like puncher, good combinations. When he hits you with two or three, he'll step off, he'll come back with two or three. Counter, he is good. Bob, Bobby's remarkable how he's gone to his right hand this round. He's thrown it so many times, Lopez has. He must see something. Oh, All right, that's the end of the opening round. Let's go over to Jim Gray. Thank you, Steve. I'm with a very familiar face. He is the owner of the world champion Dallas Cowboys, Jerry Jones. Jerry, good to see you. A lot of people say, Jerry, that the Super Bowl is the biggest event in the world, but there are those who would disagree and say a heavyweight championship fight is. What's your opinion? Well, of course, if we get to play in that Super Bowl, <laughs> I'm going to have to say it's the Super Bowl. But, uh, you know, you get these guys out here one-on-one -on -one and all the aura of two men against each other fighting it out, and you have to give it its due. But uh, we're excited about the Super Bowl in the NFL. The feeling that's here is really like none other. It's not like this at the Super Bowl, just the electricity, correct? Well, of course, uh, uh, when you're in my shoes and you get to play in a Super Bowl like we did this last weekend, I mean, this six weeks ago, uh, then it's pretty exciting. Jerry, congratulations on your Super Bowl victory. Good luck to you. Jim, good luck to you. Enjoy the fight. Let's go back to Steve. All right, Jim, thank you very much as we get set for round two, scheduled for 12 for the WBC Strawweight Championship. Better than 16,000. It's an official sellout here. Getting ready for the next fight. A couple of guys by the name of Bruno and Tyson. You know, as we finish the first round, Ferry talked about the right hand that Lopez is throwing. And that down the middle right hand is a stereotypical type of thing that a guy will do against the softball. I like that right hand. Some like the left hook, but I do like the right hand. And you know, Bobby, he puts it to the body and to the head. I mean, he's just like, like convinced that's where the money is. And he goes, Let, there it is again. It's a lead right. You know, I'm a firm believer in that right hand to the body and to the head down the middle, too, with the southpaw. When I'm working with one, it seems to be the best punch for me. So I'm going to agree with him on this one. Well, Ricardo Lopez in the white trunks is one of the premier fighters in the world, yet doesn't receive the, the recognition he deserves. He's somewhat troubling, says uh, Ricardo Lopez, as we spoke to him much sleep over it he told us the solution though he says he needs to eat more and become a heavyweight <laughs> a practical solution well bobby well, I, I, I walked with him across the the uh, lobby here we walked right by everybody nobody knew who he was but nobody but that's because also television he has not been in major major fights on television you need television to let the public know who you are the media can make him break him. you need television well his problem was walking alongside you <laughs> People thought I was Larry Merchant, maybe the low point of my life. Round two continues, scheduled for 12. Ala Villamore, 29-1-1 one one with 26 knockouts from the Philippines. His second world title shot. His first was for the IBF mini flyweight title. He lost in Thailand, where the champion was from. And right here, Ricardo Lopez, 40-0 with 30 knockouts from Mexico City. His 15th title defense, 14 at all in title fights. Well, he certainly doesn't show too much ring rust, I'll say that for him. He's bipping and bopping and, and carrying around. Uh, what Villamore is waiting for, I don't know. Villamore has a uh, sort of a respectful look on his face. He doesn't have What's a fierce look on his face. We see that right hand offered up by... Uh, Ricardo Lopez, he does like to use the right, but he told us he's determined to be the best left hand of the business. He says a fighter is only as good as his left hand. He's a smart does study student. Things. He is he's smart a, student. Exactly. He's a student of the game. He takes the cerebral approach to the sport of boxing. We really got... Uh, My pleasure. We really got wind of that in our meetings with him yesterday. Trying to open it up a little bit, but the crafty Lopez uh, showing his defense and then coming through with a straight right. The Lopez throws all good punches, crisp, clean. Not each one's a bomb, but each one is effective and each one hurts. And he throws it from, from such a beautiful stance, Bobby. I mean, he, he is so perfect. Excellent to watch. Que la derecha recta en varias opciones. 
All right, a much calmer. Nacho says, you're doing good with the right hand. Now start working the left. Hook and jab. Okay, here you're going to see Lopez. He uses the jab to find the range. Again, the left hand is directly adjacent to the right. And this right hand down the middle has been effective all day. Watch him work. There goes the jab. He throws that straight right hand down the middle. Now, that one was a little bit off out of range, but he's been doing it throughout the rounds, and it's basically been his key and his go-to right now. So Ricardo Lopez, who has not fought in about a year because of broken knuckles in each hand, comes out ready to go round three. Nacho Bernstein is a capable cornerman saying the right hand is landing. Now go with the uppercut. Uppercut, straight right hand, and don't forget the left hooks. And so he's satisfied, uh, as he should be. He's won both rounds, but now he wants to step up the action. Beresteyn, who has played eight world champions, including uh, Ricardo Lopez. Lopez said he's a huge fan of Julio Cesar Chavez and historically Sugar Ray Robinson. Chavez and uh, Lopez are fans of each other. They often critique each other's performances. Well, he's admiring the right people, I'll tell you. That's the straight right by Ricardo Lopez coming up short. There's a good left-hand counter by Villamore. Straight left. That may be the best punch he's thrown so far and landed. Beautiful straight right hand underneath thrown by Lopez. There's making another attempt to get in underneath, digging the rib cage. He's working that right hand overtime. Every punch by Lopez is crisp. Not on landing, but it's so beautifully thrown. Unfortunately, when you look at a fight, you're looking at his offensive action, but you're not looking at what a fine defense. Look what he just did. What a fine defensive fighter he is. That's I mean, if even when he misses, he, he never leaves himself out of position to come back for a punch if, if it's open. Hey, fighter. Hey, hey. Well, you don't get to be 40 and 0 by accident. He's got the whole package. Don't hold the head. Don't hold the head, Bill Don't hold the head. A warning from Joe Cortez, holding the head to Billy Moore. The Bruno fans chanting in the background. They're getting, yeah. they're getting ready. Yeah, they've been uh, they've been doing that in the lobby for about six hours. <laughs> been hours yeah, they've around. been doing it for about 48 hours. I, I, they really cranked up. They started in my room earlier today. I well, I, I hope they're calm if the fight didn't turn out right. They expect about 5,000 from Britain to. Uh, to cheer on Mr. Bruno. Meanwhile, goes on for the WBC Strawweight Championship. Ricardo Lopez in his 15th title defense against Edito Alavi. See, Lopez will very quietly take apart a very good fighter and just win every round convincingly, clearly, cleanly, and with very little effort as a a sustain no damage. And he just, uh, mark, he's remarkable. Some of those left jabs look like he's got, he's dueling. I mean, he, he steps in with you thrust with a with a dueling sword. I mean, the guy is a thing of beauty. Villamor, his first fight ever in the United States. What a card to be on, huh? The undercard of Bruno Tyson, your first fight in America. Yes, exposure. Because of who he's facing, well, right? Look at that. Look at that defense. Hi. Oh. Let's go over to Bill Boggs. Bill? Well, thank you very much, Steve. Yeah, we're actually here in the fight tunnel with Don Johnson. We're just watching the monitor coming from the celebrity party, right, Don? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess. Those guys are fast, aren't they? Those guys are very fast. I think that's going to be quite a contrast between uh, these guys and the next guys. Huh? Bru Bruno and Tyson. And what's your feeling about the fight? What do you think Frank Bruno has to do to win, Don? Well, he's got tremendous reach advantage, and, um, you know, uh, Tyson himself has said that uh, he's never been hit harder except for maybe uh, Buster Douglas. And um, so I, I would think that uh, were I him, I, I'd be uh, calling the airport for a ticket, but <laughs> I, I'm not. And I think he's just got to use his reach and, you know, and, and uh, try and keep him off of it. Well, that's it, Don. Don Johnson, good luck. Thank you. We'll be Thanks. seeing the big one soon. All right, thank you very much, Bill. We are set for round four, scheduled for 12. Ricardo Lopez, the champion in the white trunks. A la Villamor, the challenger in the, the black. And I only wish we could understand the uh, Philippine dialect that they're using in the corner. I, I, would, I would love to know what the corner is to say to Villamor. Because what instructions can you give a guy when you're being taken apart offensively and then, you, and then being taught a lesson defensively by a fighter? What can you say? 
Lopez doing a systematic job on Ala Villamore. Well, I'll tell you, Freddie, I'm sure his corner wants him to work behind the jab and get in, maybe try digging the body and throw that left hand and there he's oh, through oh, into the body. Oh, oh. I would think he's got to work off that left hand and throw the big right hook if that is his go-to punch. But right now, I think anything he throws, he better get closer with it. Villamore being cautioned for low blows. If this were a basketball game, you'd be saying that Lopez doing it at both ends. <laughs> Offense and defense. That's exactly right. I've been overdosing on basketball, and I've heard that over and over. Beautiful footway work employed by the champion, Ricardo Lopez. Wild swing it up. Villamore. He's the number one contender for the strawweight title. Remember, Villamore's got a big knockout punch that's going to turn around on one punch if he can get close enough or clean enough a punch in on this highly elusive Ricardo Lopez. 26 knockouts and 29 victories for uh, Villamore. Slapping left hook there by Lopez, blocked by the glove of Villamore. Right, right, right. But it seems like uh, the overriding factor here is not so much the offense, but the defense of Lopez are able to elude those Villamore punches. You see, he can stop oh, on a dime, plant, fire his punches, step off, pivot, and make you miss, make the punches just glance off his gloves so effortlessly. It's, it's just a beautiful thing to watch. The champ in control, Ricardo Lopez, as he just continues oh, to make it, Villamore it, miss. Side to side, footwork, everything. And those punches are... Uh, you know, Bobby, you watch perfection like this. You think of Pep, and I think of a very young Muhammad Ali when he was Cassius Clay. This is what he did. He gave you all kind of angles, moved. You couldn't hit him. There was no way to find it. And uh, you think of the great, great fighters who have these styles. It's good to see one guy that has that perfection. Over the top by Ricardo Lopez, a looping right hand that caught Villamore right on the head. He has genuinely mastered it all, defense, offense, to the head, to the oh, body, with his feet, with his hands, with his head. He slips, he moves, he steps in, he puts his head in the right place. He's safe on a counter. He just really does everything. Final 10 seconds of round four. Ricardo Lopez in complete command. Nice right hand down the middle. That got Villamore's attention. So whatever you do, end up with a right hand to deliver. And watch his head, he's getting very close. You don't want to cut here. He's, he's pleading with him to right hand to the liver. He said, that's your chest that's going to finish this guy off. Head, your, your, your head's not low enough because you're going to get butted. He said, don't forget the right hand to deliver. Roseanne on hand and uh, wow. fortunately it. not uh, singing the national anthem. Look how nice she looks. Mm. Seems to lost weight and looks very, very nice. Round five. Watch your head, guys. Watch your head. This is the fight preceding the main event. Bruno Tyson, the odds have been fluctuating on that fight all night. It's now down to five to one for Tyson. Bruno by KO has dropped from 12 to one to five to one a couple of minutes ago. We got that. The over under still five rounds. You know, when you got a fighter this good and, and this headed toward legendary, your, your corner seems to be respectful. At the end of all the tirades, Agree with what I said? He said, yeah, he should go out and do it. I mean, he's asking, is it okay, boss? Is it okay, chief? And I once had a trainer when I was in the amateur say to me, came back in the corner after the second round of a very tough fight. There's only three rounds in the amateur. only got one round left to make the difference. And he said to me, you know, you fight better than I ever did. I can't tell you what to do. I said, wow, <laughs> I could have a problem here. So <laughs> here's a guy that I'm guy. sure was better than his trainer, although the trainer can see things he can't. He knows what to do. Well, it's what Ali used to do. Ali used to come to the court and say, shut up. I know what I'm he was his own man. Oh, yeah. He knew better than we did. Ignacio Beristan, who's trained several uh, world champions, and his prized pupil right Lopez. And Lopez continues to have his way against uh, Ala Villamor. This for the WBC Strawweight Championship. Ooh, he rocked him there. 
I think he kind of tripped on his leg. Well, oh, that was two solid punches. Lopez nice coming, right in the hook. Coming right in on Ala Villamor, who's been down. Keep in mind, only once in his career in 31 fights. He's been receiving a thudding right hand, and he's, he's holding up well, but that's going to start to wear out. There's the right hand to deliver that he wanted him to deliver. Villamor uh, looking a little wobbly right yeah. here. He's starting to cave in. These punches beginning to take. Lopez told us it's the cumulative effect that wears his opponents down. That's why Nacho wanted him to go to the liver. He said, this guy's wearing out now. You can just thud a few punches off the liver, and he does. That's a very effective punch, very weakening to get hit in the liver. Beautiful lefts, doubling up, tripling up by Lopez. The right hand's finding its mark more and more. It's getting down the middle, and it's just landing. You can hear the thud. Hey, hey, less and less glove, more and more chin and head. And this is a guy coming off uh, two broken bones, and in his hands, so showing no signs, no ill effects. Wow, swing and a miss by Villamore. Yeah, there was a left hand to the liver. Slid along to the land pumping, but he's trying. There's another one. Villamore is going to feel this in the morning. 25 seconds to go in round five. Well, he is now beginning to look like a hunted animal. He begins to look like the guy that's being hunted down. This could be a matter of time. You know, he's just so consistent, so accurate with his punches, his slips, his counters, they're all one after another, on the money. Very frustrating to have to be an opponent for this man. He is so sure of his punches. Oh. Okay, once again, you see that this right hand, he's looking to get this right hand down the middle or looping it. And he steps to him, he closes the gap, and he fires this punch, and he does it double. He'll back it up, and you'll see him. He throws it there, which is actually, that was a long, right back with another one, right on the money. He's just so consistent and so accurate with that punch. There's no way for Villamar to get away from him. We enter round six. Let's see if Lopez picks up where he left off in round five, where he's very effective. He was to say it's a shutout. Look, yeah, he was to say. You know, Bobby, with the assurance that he throws that right hand to the body, it would seem that he would be open uh, for the other guy to fire as soon as he, because he's landing it, you know, like he, he, he doesn't even care if this guy throws anything back at him. Seems like you, you should be able to hit him when he does it. See there? He's completely, he throws it, and he's completely wide open. You know, part of the problem with that is a little deceiving for it because the way he, he almost drops down like a side-hand pitcher, and sometimes he takes that up and hits you in the face, so if you're not watching for it, it can catch you flush in the face. Therefore, he watched for it and hit you right in the belly. So the old submarine. Yeah. Very, very deceiving. Lopez knows he can connect almost at will right here. He's got a great, great bag of tricks, and, and he, he's awesome in defense. And more bad news for uh, Villamor's confidence seems to be growing. When you're 40 and 0, almost all knockouts, <laughs> you have the right to overconfidence, as a matter of fact. 30 knockouts out of those 40 uh, victories for Lopez, his fifth, right. 15th right. title defense. Joe right. Cortez, the referee. Couple of straight lefts there by Villamor, but having uh, little or no effect on the champion, Lopez. Lopez who stands right in there. You know, Lopez saying he would like to fight one big fight to get the attention of the public, but the problem is who's out there that, that's anywhere close to as good as this guy? You know, it's a shame he's such a lightweight. I'd love to see him around 160, 170, 200 pounds. No, but, you know, a little bit higher up, there's some pretty good fighters if he's willing to add a little weight. He's going to have to move up because the other champions in this particular division are uh, the household names. The strawweight uh, champions. He got, hit with, he got hit with a good straight left there. But once again, no second or third punch was able to catch him. He that, slips, ties his man up, spins off. Not a problem. That might have been the first punch that landed good in about three rounds now. Villamor looking to come on a little more now offensively. There, but 
uh, not really that much damage. Lopez comes right back to the body of the head. Lopez has a bloody nose, so there's a little bit of sting on a couple of those left hands. What a systematic beating he's taken, VMO. 20 seconds. Systematic breaking down of a fight. Blood on the face of uh, the champion, Lopez. Coming out of the nose, as Bobby pointed out. Left hook. Crisp left hook there by Lopez. Hold the head, hold the head down. Now there's the bell that went round six. Let's get it over to Jim Gray. All right, thank you very much, Steve. I'm now joined by Eddie Murphy. Eddie, you're a big boxing... Ed, pardon? Eddie Murray, not Eddie Murphy. <laughs> Eddie, I want to know what you think about the Mike Tyson fight coming up here. You are a big boxing fan, and you've virtually seen all of Mike's fights. Yeah, I mean, and, and um, I'm really happy to be out and see Mike get his one of his back. I'm really looking forward to it, and I love Mike, and knock this kid out. Now, two now, rounds. <laughs> two rounds. Frank, I have nothing against you. You're a wonderful man, but that's Mike's belt, okay? <laughs> you got a movie coming up, The Nutty Professor. When's it coming out? Uh, June 28th. June 28th. Is it funny? Uh, yeah, it's a pretty funny one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hope so. <laughs> nice to see you, Eddie. Back to you, Steve. All right, Jim, and Eddie Murphy, very happy he's not trading. No, or things. Round seven. Via Moore's corner, yelling right, that he has to go right. for broke. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. He has uh, come through with his left and bloodied Lopez's nose. That happened in the sixth round. But this has been surgery by uh, Ricardo Lopez, a surgical process. He has just carved it out. Oh, straight oh. right hand. Beautiful. You see the effects of that? A little you bit of a delayed that. reaction. That split second when he's just wobbler and the sweat is just flying off the, the hair of Viamore, which makes it even more dramatic. Like something around had a raging bull. A new photographer's dream. I'm ready to catch that. Well, Lopez is really making contact with that straight right. Right, straight, right down the middle, and the Viamore separates his gloves and opens it up. There it is again, a straight right. But this VMware is game, he just keeps charging forward. Look out, holding and hitting. In the midway point of round seven. Never over anxious, never in too big a hurry. Takes his time, systematic dismantling his opponents. He's just beautiful to watch. He epitomizes that the sweet science is all about hit and not get hit, do on to others, and then split. <laughs> he really is good. <laughs> Very nice, buddy. Oh, Lopez with a solid straight right hand. Oh, watch on the face and then another shot with the left. That's what happens when you stick your face out against, against a guy with that kind of talent. Yeah, you can stick your face out, but it can't be against Lopez. Not somebody with good talent. You're right. And you notice know. even at that, you stick his head out there and just lay it for him. He can go jumping and crazy. Just come over here and take that with you. Yeah. Went back to business as usual. He does it with such calmness. He's got a great rhythm about him. Lopez. Oh, digging to the body with uppercuts, Ricardo Lopez. They almost knocked heads. And then a straight lift by Lopez. Just showing it all. Under 30 seconds. Another big round for the champion, Ricardo Lopez. Final seconds of round seven for the WBC Strawweight Championship. Ricardo Lopez, his 15th final defense in command. Let's go up to Jim Hill. Jim? All right, Steve, thank you very much. And you know, Tommy, you are really impressed with uh, Ricardo Lopez and his performance. Absolutely. He's a, he's a very, very good technician. And I tell you, I wish that the heavyweight sort of pace, I think that uh, they'd be champions forever. You know, it's kind of amazing when you watch the little guys, so to speak, fight. They give you continuous action. They absolutely do. They work 
You seem like they're getting near the glory, though. You know, when you talk about Ricardo Lopez, what, what impresses you the most about him? His ability to be so offensive and at the same time so defensive. That the, you know, he's just such a, a good defensive and offensive technician. I think he does a great job. You know, and it's really amazing that a lot of people don't know that much about him. You know, we talk about a lot of people don't know that much about him. And, you know, when you look at him now, you can see exactly what you're talking about. Absolutely. Right there is uh, throwing a good right hand. He keeps himself at a good distance as well to, to be offensive again if he has to. And it also looks like he's just pacing himself and doing exactly what he wants. Steve, back to you now. All right, thanks, Jim. Lots of celebrities settling in here ringside, and they're seeing a uh, convincing performance here by little Ricardo Lopez as we enter round number eight. Lopez captured the title in 1990 with a fifth-round knockout of Hideko Oashi in Tokyo, and he's made 14 consecutive successful title defenses. He was 25-0 at the time. He the title shot and was ranked number four at the time. And he oh. hasn't looked back. Oh, what a great there he goes. uppercut. The time has come here. What a great Four. uppercut, Bobby. Five. He, no, he can't get up. He doesn't Seven. want it now. He's, he's gone. Nine. Forget about it. It's over. It's over. That was a thing of beauty. Sweet. Seven. 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 Slip. Seven. 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 Move in. Step in with a punch. Use his body behind it. And the man's with one punch can. A convincing victory for Ricardo Lopez as he knocks out Ala Villamore here in round number eight. And he does it with an explosive display. And Villamore remains on his back. So he had Villamore sprawl. And Ricardo Lopez now going to 41-0 with 31 knockouts and retains his WBC strawweight championship in his 15th title defense. So it's hugs all around. Most impressive Ricardo Lopez with a surgical-like procedure here against Ala Villamor. He continues to hold on to the title. He is held since October of 1990. Ricardo Lopez now 41-0. see a replay of just pure perfection. He steps in, slips the counter, throws a left uppercut, and you just watch that delayed effect. He just did such a... It was two or three moves all at once. It's just such an effortless fashion. Here you watch it again. He'll step in, watch the jab. He'll step in, slip it, and go right under it. Slip it, under it. Bang! It's almost like a blind shot, because with your own jab out, you won't see that punch. He slips it, and then all of a sudden, you're getting hit full force. He had his body in line. You watch it again. He Look, he digs up. He springs up with his legs, digs right up into it. That, that's just a delayed reaction. That is a beautiful, beautiful shot. A thunderous left uppercut. We'll take another look in super, super slow-mo. Here he goes. Steps under and rips up from the floor with his foot. A little bit, but he got all of them with that punch. What a delayed reaction as his... His legs buckled, and down he went. Let's go up to Jimmy Lennon, Jr. for the official announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the 20 seconds even in the round and number eight. A referee in charge, Joe Cortez, reaches the count of 10. He's the winner by way of knockout. Still undefeated, still the WBC strawweight champion of the world, Ricardo Benito. Lopez. Ricardo Lopez, the pride of Mexico City, Mexico, records the defense of the WBC. Champion on my left, fighting out of the red corner. Entering the ring wearing white trunks with green and red trim. Originally from Cuernavaca, Morelos, Mexico. Now fighting out of Mexico City, Distrito Federal, Mexico. He weighed in at already 104 and one half pounds. His record represents the longest undefeated streak among current champions with 40 wins, no losses. 30 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight he is making the 15th defense of his title. Here is the WBC strawweight champion of the world introducing Ricardo Benito Lopez. 
Once again, here's our referee in charge, Joe Cortez, now to give him to Vanis, the, uh, the other man. So, so he's had intense physical preparation for this fight, but he hasn't fought in a year, which brings up the questions of ring rust. Will it take some time for the reflexes and the reactions to, to kick in? You would think a, uh, a normal human being. Yes, well, we'll see about uh, this guy. Some think he's immortal in the world of boxing. If he was working with Cobb Castro in the gym, Cobb Castro brings a lot to the table, and his reflexes would have to have been honed then, and I believe they probably will be. And even though Villamore's a left-hander, he told us his best punch is the right hook. And, of course... Uh, Lopez has seen so many left-handers, it just doesn't bother him a bit. I mean, not a bit. Pia Moore, the southpaw precision puncher. That's a good straight to the left. The right hook, as we mentioned, he's a hard hitter. Right now, he's giving uh, Lopez too much respect. He sees strawweight championship of the world scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. To you first, the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner. He is wearing solid black trunks and joining us all the way from Mandue City on the island of Cebu in the Philippines. He weighed in at 105 pounds. His record includes 29 wins, only one defeat, one draw, with 26 big wins coming by way of knockout. He is ranked the number one WBC strawweight contender in the world, introducing the hard-hitting Ala Villamore. And his opponent across the ring, we present the defending Villamore. Down only once in his career in 93. His only loss, a seventh round TKO for the IBF title against Ratanapol for Surapin of Thailand. This for the WBC Strawweight Championship. The champion, Lopez in the white trunks. The challenger, Villamore in the black. Well, you look at Lopez, never lost as an amateur, never lost as a pro, reigning world champion, 15 title defenses. His nose is perfectly straight. Yeah. <laughs> Drives me crazy. Well, at the time of that last Lopez fight, he just didn't seem to be himself. The crowd was going derisively, and now we know why, after talking to him yesterday, why he wasn't himself, because of the knuckle problems in his hands. He broke one in the first round, the other one in the fourth round, and he fought 12 rounds with two fractured bones in either hand. Now, that takes guts. And literally, that's literally, pain. Beat, literally beat the man with one hand. He fought almost a one-handed fight at that. And he's Lopez, Willemar. Gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. Come over here, Villamar. Kelly La Regla and Camerino. Get una pelea limpia. I want a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Okay, these trunks are a little high. Están poquito alto los calzones. Okay, bien. Okay, shake hands. Good luck. Lopez out a year because of fractured knuckles in both hands, which happened, as he told us, in the first and fourth rounds of his last fight with Andy Tavanis. He underwent seven months of rehab, also treated at the UCLA Medical Center for ankle problems. Villamore's southpaw style should not affect Lopez. Of his 15 title fights, he's fought seven lefties, and he's seven for seven. And he's trained uh, for this fight with uh, Melcher Cobb Castro as southpaw. 